Nemco. Hello and welcome to another Game Nexus Arcade video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Soul Calibur 3 released in 2005 on the Namco System 246 arcade hardware. 3. Or should I say another look? Basically what had happened here was uh, lately when before Soul Calibur 6 had just come out this uh, past weekend, depending on when you see this, I had been thinking a lot about Soul Calibur, and I just kind of got in the mood to play Soul Calibur 3 Arcade Edition again, and I was thinking to myself, I never released a video where I played as Lee Long before. And unfortunately, not a lot of people have seen him in action in this particular game. Watched over by and the as opposed to um, their fury. Soul Edge or Soul Blade, if you're talking about you. the PlayStation or the um, arcade version respectively, well, in Japan it was known as Soul Edge on PlayStation, but in that version of the game he actually uses a single nunchuck with um, blades on each end of... Uh, each piece of it. Whereas in this game, I guess they figured instead of just having him being yet another nunchuck wielder, because of course you already have Maxi, they figured they would give him something new for uh, Soul Calibur 3, and they basically gave him a dual nunchuck style, as you can see from uh, what you're seeing right now. So. Instead of uh, Maxi's style, which is, of course, a lot different because he only has one weapon, uh, Lee Long here has two. So, as you can see, and as you'll see in this footage from a lot of the moves he does, um, it really does add a bit of, like, uh, dynamic to his uh, moves. You win. I'll accept your challenge anytime. I can remember when I first played this, I was kind of disappointed that his hat doesn't fall off. That was disappointing. Because what unfortunately with, uh, like, since Dead or Alive 2 when they had hats, everyone's hats always I fell off. To the likes of you. Okay, let's give it a go. And even with, um, the one. Virtual Fight. Fighter 2, you'd have, uh, Pie Chan's hat that would actually fall off, so I just kind of got used to that, so... I thought it would have been cool if they added that kind of touch, but unfortunately his hat never comes off. Now, if you've played Total Calibur 3 on the PlayStation 2, you'll know that Lee Long is included as a bonus character. So basically, in the PlayStation 2 version, he's just like kind of this add-on character that you can play and um, he doesn't have like his own moves, he just has a generic move set. Whereas what they've done here for Soul Calibur 3 Arcade Edition when they released it is basically instead of him just having this very generic move set, he now has a lot different moves that he didn't have originally. And they've more or less fleshed out this um, bonus character, if you will, into a fully fleshed out character. And they did that same thing with uh, Huang Sol Yun, which for some reason the English announcer in this game calls Huang, with a, with a very hard vowel sound, as opposed to the original Soul Calibur, where it was like Huang Sol Yun, and of course Amy becomes a full character here. Which, if you see in a few of my gameplays, you can actually see me you play against her. Yet. If anybody wants me to, I can do a full ga gameplay with uh, Amy Versus as the Rock. playable character. Disappointing. His anger is the anger and that's the one thing that I have to say uh, upon playing Soul it's Calibur VI so here. far that I kind of miss is the uh, pushing the button on the Versus screen and having them say something, which has been something since, like, uh, Soul Calibur 2. But, uh, Lee Long's fighting style here is something I really like, and I wouldn't mind seeing him be included in more of the Soul Calibur games, even though he's kind of like a dream match, since I believe after Soul Edge he died, so that's why he was never included in Soul Calibur or any of those games. But, um, 
I like the dual nunchuck style and it really adds a dynamic. And the funny part is, it had been so long since I had um, played Soul Edge that I actually had to look back at my arcade video that I made way back when. Because I didn't remember, did Lee Long use one nunchuck back then or did he use two? And I was thinking it definitely had to be one. I couldn't see it being two. And I looked and sure enough, it was only one. But then again, it wasn't a big deal because Maxi didn't exist back then. Not until Soul Calibur did Maxi exist replacing Lee Long. The grueling battle ended with a victory of Lee Long. You win. You thought you could beat me. The funny thing about the English voices in this particular game versus Tira. Is at one point they were kind of cringy for me and I didn't really like them. But nowadays they kind of I kind of don't mind them anymore. You've been dead before you know it. Battle one. Fight. And if you're wondering why the scene kind of just changed really quick, I had lost once to Tira at this point, and um, I just edited out that loss. So if you check the time before, and then you check it now, you'll see it went up a little bit. But one thing I definitely have to say I love about this game is the open feeling of the stages. Like, you'll see the animations and it'll be moving. And I probably have said it in previous videos, but... This stage reminds me a lot of Lee Long's stage from Soul Edge, because his stage from that game was a floating platform like this. And, um, yeah, this stage reminds me a lot of that. And that kick that Lee Long just did where he slid on the ground, I can remember doing a similar move to that in um, Soul Calibur as Maxi, and he would literally just slide right off the platform and you lose. I can't remember how many times I lost because of that. And, um, it was just one of those moves that really, uh, annoyed me because I would accidentally do it and then, um, and then lose the match because of it. And I like that, that charge move he does. It's really cool. But of course, just like, any of the charge moves, it takes a little bit of time to charge up, so your um, opponent can use that to their advantage. Burns violently for vengeance. It's too late to cower in fear. Well, you certainly talk big. And as you can see there, Maxi has the one nunchuck, whereas this version of Lee Long has the uh, dual wielding going on. So Maxi has a lot, lot of like really quick moves, whereas Lee Long has a lot of moves that are big aerial effects. Sure, Lee, uh, Maxi has like some big sweeping moves, but since Lee Long is sw uh, swinging two weapons at once, he has a lot of moves that can really devastate the whole area. Battle two, fight. So that's why uh, Lee Long has a much different dynamic in this game than Maxi does. It's just a very different feel to the way his moves are done and the way that you have to think about dealing with your opponent. He has a lot of quick, close moves that if you only use those moves, you're never going, going to win any matches. I can remember when I first fought as Lee Long, I would only use those um, right on top of the enemy moves. And unfortunately, those like really quick moves that you didn't get like those dynamic combos that really take a lot of damage out. Just didn't do enough damage really quick and I would always get beaten because I wouldn't do enough damage. Oh, and that's one move that I love, that move where he, um, he kind of just like throws you with his leg. The move where he throws you with his leg is kind of performed where you're running toward the character and just as you're about to hit them, you press the kick button. And that is what triggers that that particular throw, and it's a very nice one if you ask me. That was disappointing. The cursed one bears its fangs to the god that has forsaken it. Come at me with all your might. 
Battle one. Fight. And now you'll see you'll see there was a little bit of a uh crop there too. And that's because that was the other match that I had lost in this gameplay. One match to Lizard Man. So, um, I don't know if you can guess it by now, but I'll, I'll uh, make mention of this again for anyone who hasn't seen my previous, um, my previous Soul Calibur 3 Arcade Edition gameplays. But... The way that the uh, arcade mode works in Soul Calibur 3 Arcade Edition is you can face one of three bosses. If you do really well, you'll face Night Terror. If you do pretty well, you'll face Abyss. If you don't do too well at all, uh, you'll face the top um, Legends character from Legends mode. So I'll let you guess right now what uh, boss I ended up getting in this since I had two losses, which... Actually, I, I left the loss to Lizard Man in there, so uh, there you go. You got a little bit of extra gameplay. I didn't realize I left that, but since at this point we're like more than halfway through the video, it didn't add that much time because Lizard Man kind of beat me fast enough. So, that's two losses to Lizard Man, and I think one loss to, uh, Tira, but I could be wrong. It could have been two losses, but I edited those all out. But, um, I just figured I'd give you a nice look at, um, what, um, what, uh, Lee Long looks like in Soul Calibur 3 Arcade Edition here. Now, I can honestly tell you... As compared to the bonus character you got in the PlayStation 2 version, I don't know how much the moveset really differs because that version of Lee Long I hadn't really um, played much as. I may go back someday and um, kind of do a bit more gameplay as that version of Lee Long and just see how he really differs. It's probably that a lot of the moves that he has in this he just didn't have. Because, as I said, that was like a nunchuck fighting style, and he was just like the Versus example Saint character Green. for that. Once so, um... The evil blade, he now seeks to end its cursed existence. Come at me with all your might. I fear nothing. I will face my darkness. Battle oh, that's not the fight. intro of Siegfried where he goes, I'm through with nightmares. I still say that's my favorite thing he says because... At this point in the game, Siegfried is no longer Nightmare, as he became, uh, before Soul Calibur. Which, if you saw my, um, my Soul Blade, uh, gameplay video, I actually showed the, uh, the Nightmare suit, which was a bonus feature with, uh, the PlayStation version of Soul Blade. So, if you watch that video, you can see what that looks like. He had all the same moves as Siegfried, and he still had Siegfried's voice, but it was kind of cool to be, like, the quote-unquote, like, beta version of, um, of, uh, Nightmare. You win. It was nothing personal. Now, if you're watching this and you're wondering where you can download this ROM, um, Versus at the moment, uh, this being the end of October 2018, there is no emulator that will run this game. Down the road, by the time we're, we, uh, it's uh, many years from now, you never know, they might be. But from what I understand, the big problem with running this game on an emulator is that the full understanding of how um, the Namco system 246 and 256 dongles fully works is not completely understood yet, so that's why emulation at this point of the game is impossible. So, as I said, I am actually playing this game on the real system with the real disc and the real dongle. There are people who can make copies of dongles, like they could make a uh, Soul Calibur 3 Arcade Edition dongle and you could use a burned disc with it. But, as I said, there's still no way, at the moment, to emulate this game. Since, of course, PCSX2 will not play this game because... Um, it's made to emulate a PlayStation 2 game console, which does not load program data off of a dongle, it loads it off of a disc. You win. You 
And the way these games work is the whole program is on the dongle and all the game data is on the disc. Versus Abyss. And as you see... The torrent of countless souls unleashed from the blade threatens to engulf. It, I will never yield to the likes of you. And as you see here... Battle one. I have, uh, basically did the, uh, not terrible, not amazing, but medium, uh, in getting Abyss as my boss. But as I was saying, the program data for, for the game is loaded off the dongle, which, when you boot either 256 or 256 running one of these games, it'll do beep tones to indicate it loaded the program right, then it goes to pull the assets off the disc and start running the game. A PlayStation 2 emulator is not made to do that, so that's why this won't run on an emulator, unless somebody specifically made it to do that. And now what's really weird is if um, you're playing the game at, and you get the Legends character as your boss, they still explode in the same way, which seeing it happen to Night Terror, not so weird. Seeing it happen to Abyss, not so weird because they're like this powerful boss guy. He just got defeated so he kind of explodes and that's kind of not so strange looking. But seeing it happen to like a regular human character, albeit they're glowing a little bit because they're like the strongest Legends character, it seems a bit strange if you ask me. But um, as you can see here, Li Long has a really nice playstyle for Soul Calibur um, 3 Arcade Edition, which unfortunately to this day, 2018, 13 years after this game came out, there is still no other game that they've included Li Long, at least in this style, in. But for those who don't know, um, Abyss is basically a transformed or demonized Zosilamel, kind of how Soul Edge was a transformed Cervantes. Um, Really, uh, really cool character. I really like how they did that. And I could remember when I first faced Abyss, when I played the uh, PS2 version of this, I had no idea how to beat him. He had that, like, um, Jinpachi Mishima type hard, or that SNK type hard when I first fought him. But after a while, you kind of figure out what he does, and it's not too bad. Another character that was pretty bad when I first faced him was Algol from, um, Soul Calibur 4. He had definitely much harder um, difficulty than I was used to when I first faced him. But then, of course, you figure out all his moves and it's no big deal. Well, this has been another Game Nexus Arcade video, and I will see you later. Bye.